hack into cybersecurity? There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. I don't know who in the world made that intro, but that beat just gets me going. I love hearing it. Good morning. Today is June 28th of the year 2023. This is episode 397. And it's really incredible, right? I mean, all of y'all think about it. 397 episodes. This thing has been around. This is crazy. So I was thinking about it earlier and I, I want y'all to blow up the chat. So on Monday will be the inaugural 400 episodes. And I want to, me and the, I'll talk to the mods a little bit later today. I'm sorry, this is a little bit of jaw jacking, but I just want to throw this out at the beginning. Um, but we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have that 400th episode on Monday. And I want to do something for the community. So think about it. And then do hashtag cybersecurity gift and your idea. Like it's a, a training seminar video or something like that. And me and the mods will try to go through it and we'll try to do some sort of raffle or some sort of giveaway on Monday, but I'll try to figure all that stuff out. Um, but since I'll be guest hosting and it will be the 400 episode, I want to do something for the community. So think about it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try to figure something out and see you know, logistically and things of that nature, if it's that idea is a good idea and we'll, we'll try to get something, but I want to give a couple of days to try to figure out and we'll have the weekend to kind of sort it out, things of that nature. So, you know, if you think that there'll be something cool for the community or something like that, drop that idea in the chat so that way we can go back and take a look at it. And I, I would love to explore those. So anyway, again, welcome to episode 397 of Simply Cyber's Daily Threat Briefing, the show where we break down the light latest cybersecurity threads and how you can incorporate this information into your daily cybersecurity practices and techniques and procedures in your organization. I am your guest host sitting in the quote unquote a chair, Eric Taylor over here at Barricade Cyber Solutions. And I'm going to cover all of today's top cybersecurity and provide expert technical analysis on each of the story. Before we dig into the stream, I do want to tell you about our stream sponsors. Yeah, of course, you know Barricade Cyber. We've been around. We're Evergreen. And tell you about the other Evergreen um, sponsor, which is Panopsize Security. Look, we, we've been talking about this for a little while. And even myself, as part of Barricade Cyber, we're going to be uh, um, talking with Brandon Poole with Panopsize because he, here's the thing. A lot of times us practitioners and us owners, we're so knee deep into it. We we don't always think about certain type of threat vectors. We don't think about certain type of uh, possible vulnerabilities into our infrastructure. So having a fresh pair of eyes to come in and take a look at your infrastructure, look at your threat land, your landscape to look at potential threats and possible issues inside of your organization is literally crucial. So talk to Panopsi get yourself a quantified risk assessment, have that fresh pair of eyes from a third party view to, that will be able to uncover those rocks, right? So let them come all to moan and Pumba on you, uncover that rock, find those crazy little bugs or worming around over there and, you know, help secure those holes and make your business more secure, right? So if you are with us today on the live stream, hashtag team live, in the chat, we're seeing you currently. 
Uh, we're seeing Samantha. We're seeing Jonathan. We're seeing Jason. We see Ken. Good to see you. Good to see you. We see Cat GPT. Hope, glad everybody is here. Currently sitting at 109 people live. This is amazing. Um, if you are catching up, you're running a few minutes late. You are team hybrid. You know, uh, put that in the chat. We'll love to see you. I uh, see the shout outs. Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, Steve. Um, if you are the one that never gets really talked about, but team audio, I know you're not there, but we do see you. You are on the podcast. Um, so we'd love to see you out there uh, sucking up this knowledge and going forward. And if you are like me, you are team passive observer and you are you just quiet in the background. You know, most of us tech people are right. Um, you know, we, we like to sit behind the keyboard. We like to get our our uh, hands dirty, if you will, in, in the technology and the day to day grind of things. So um, I see you out there. I, I know your pain. I know. Um, I know there's a whole goofy, um, it's a trend to be um, passive observer, but it's it's a struggle for those who really are in that. So I, if you're, your team passive observer, I see you. Um, I feel you. I'm right there with you. So um, we're going to go there. It does feel good to dust off that first round jitters and bugs of that first podcast of yesterday it's been a while since i've done a live stream so i'm really glad that yesterday is over with um help remind me of some of the the issues that we're having definitely glad that we're going to have this video up a little bit better so with that said i i think we should just kick this thing off right um oh one thing i know that today is wednesday it is typically worldwide wednesday I just don't have the capability of doing Worldwide Wednesday, um, so much apologies. Like like normal, we just I just don't have that capability of doing it. Um, so uh, much apologies for those who are coming here to uh, witness that. But with that, we will dive into the news of the day. And I see everybody dropping it here. So as soon as we start this up, I will do y'all's illustrious sound. And here we go. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Wednesday, June 28, 2023. Over 6,500 arrested since EncroChat hack by authorities. During a press conference Tuesday, French and Dutch authorities provided an update on a 2020 operation in which they broke into the EncroChat encrypted messaging network. Authorities collected real-time messages from EncroChat users via their Android-powered handsets, which cost a hefty 1,500 British pounds for a six-month contract. EncroChat handsets promised completely secure communications and could be configured to wipe themselves if a particular PIN was entered to unlock it. Authorities have arrested over 6,500 suspects worldwide, including 100 197 high-value targets. They also seized drugs, including 30.5 million pills, 103.5 metric tons of cocaine, 163.4 metric tons of cannabis, and 3.3 metric tons of heroin. They also seized nearly 900 million euros worth of cash and assets, including vehicles, homes, planes, weapons, and explosives. What in the holy... I mean, Jimmy Christmas... This was a massive takedown. The amount of drugs and oh my gosh. Wow. Good for them. Hats off. Yeah, that really they took a major major freaking cyber, uh, major crime ring off of production, really. I mean, 30.5 million pills. 1035 tons of cocaine 164 tons of cannabis oh holy that is just nuts ladies and gentlemen that is literally literally nuts i mean, i think the only reason this actually come became part of the CISO series was because of essentially the hack back right so We've seen it in some other organizations like um, uh, NVIDIA when they got compromised. 
uh, they actually hacked back the threat actors. Um, we've seen this with other uh, situations and, excuse me. So I think that may be the reason why this became part of the CISO series just because of that. But that is, that is pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Zoom in the middle of the page. Sorry, I was seeing something from the, the mods. I think I did zoom on that. Um, please let me know if the center, or if y'all can be able to see that, um, the image there. Third-party vendor hack exposes American and Southwest Airlines data. A breach of pilot credentials, third-party application has affected data of more than 8,700 pilots at American Airlines and Southwest Airlines. The breach discovered on May 3rd was limited to the vendor systems and reportedly did not compromise the airline's networks. American Airlines breach notifications revealed that social security numbers, driver's license and passport numbers, dates of birth, airman certificate numbers, and other government identification details were exposed. Southwest said they've discontinued use of the third-party system in favor of an internal portal managed by Southwest. Oh my gosh, I'm glad. So before I talk, give content, I've seen in the chat, somebody wanted me to share this link, so there you go um user so i just posted that chat for the uh encro chat probe um you nope know, shout out and <laughs> you know plug for the you know the stream sponsor you know panopsi i bet you they would have probably potentially been able to find that third party vendor during their quantified risk assessment right um yeah i'm not sure how wide their spread goes but this is definitely uh something to talk to them about um you know we see I really don't know when businesses are really going to take their vendor qualifications and processes more seriously, right? So when you're bringing on a vendor, you know, uh, EDR or, you know, your CRM or whatever technology you're going to be deploying inside of the your organization you, know, you should grill them a little bit about you know what their frame like okay okay mr vendor mr or mrs vendor um inside of your organization what cybersecurity policy do you adhere to um what you know are you you know a SOC 2 compliant oh a fun fact for so here let me go completely off script here because this is what i do um did you know that a SOC 2 audit, while sounds impressive, and it really is a pretty decent compliancy, um, being able to go through and do that, did you know you could limit your SOC 2 compliance? Let's just say your organization or your vendor in this situation has 13 departments inside of it. You can limit that SOC 2 anal uh, analysis to one department and ignore the rest of them. So yes, your company is SOC 2 compliant, but when you start looking at the actual scope, it's, you can actually see, oh, it's only limited for this. So I will just say, without getting myself into trouble, there are, in the IT space, or the MSP space, there are what's called RMM tools, remote management, and uh, remote monitor and management, uh, RMM for short. And some vendors are SOC 2 compliant, but it's for their internal processes. It's not for the crap that they're hosting and reselling. So, you know, if a vendor says, oh, we're SOC 2 compliant, ask for a copy of that SOC 2 compliancy. See if that thing is actually to the scope of the software that you're buying and or leasing. That way you're fully, you know, you're able to do your quote unquote due diligence, right? So that's something that I've learned over the years about SOC 2 compliance. There's also some other stuff, right? So, um, you know, when's the last time they potentially had a pen test? Can you get a copy of that? Even if it's a sanitized version, you know, um, if it's, um, you know, if they can only produce a pen test from three years ago, that listed potentially 18 things. Did they fix those 18? Did they have a follow-up report? You know, th these are discussions that you're, a lot of times you're not going to have um, part of a sales call. 
so little tip, tip i'm gonna freaking go long <laughs> here we go um but a tip that i always do is anytime i am about to vet a vendor uh, i do think i've seen a question in uh just a moment ago i'll try to answer that um the when i vet a vendor you know when we're having that sales call i'm like look you need to have a technical representative and you need to potentially have the CISO on that call or we're not having a phone call at all i don't care it's just the way it is um because i have yeah you know, the functionality conversations are a great conversation to have um but i i need more in depth that that salesperson is not going to know they're just not it's not in their scope it's not in their wheelhouse and i don't hold that told that against them it's just different roles different aspects right so um mods i did see a ch uh, question come into the chat but it's fly oh here we go eric ha have you ever seen tools like quick assist being used by apts oh leonardo oh uh, uh okay i promise we'll go into jaw jacking short answer yes but i will address that in jaw jacking leonardo on with the stories Microsoft is oh. investigating. So sorry about that. I was not sharing the screen. So do you did not hear the audio system in favor of court numbers, dates of birth, airman's issue may also affect users in South America. It's their exchange online mailboxes. Microsoft. Did sorry. I'm trying to get the audio, right? My apologies, ladies and gentlemen, just give me one second. Go back. Just go back two seconds. Okay. Here we go. Sorry. Microsoft service outage woes continue. Microsoft is investigating ongoing issues causing some users to receive unexpected 500 errors when attempting to access their Exchange Online mailboxes. Microsoft initially reported the outage only impacted the North American region, but user reports showed the issue may also affect users in South America who have also reported Outlook desktop application crashes. Microsoft later confirmed that connectivity issues are more widespread than initially reported. Earlier this month, Microsoft services including Azure Portal, Outlook.com, and OneDrive were taken down following DDoS attacks claimed by a threat actor known as Anonymous Sudan. Mm. I mean, this just goes to the, the some of these of the story that we seen yesterday, right, ladies and gentlemen, where you know phishing attempts are going against Microsoft. Now we got you know outages. I mean, Microsoft's been having a lot of problems lately, and I mean, let's just be honest. Right. I mean, you take the rack space, take the data breach out of things, um, but you take rack space, you take Netflix, you take um, you know, any of these massive glo e either U.S. or global entities, and they're going to have problems because there's going to be, you know, their landscape is so large and so it, things are constantly moving. It, it, they're going to be under attack, right? So, you know, everybody wants that thousand or that pie in the sky, you know, breach and, you know, hey, you know, we're able to hang our hat on this particular thing. And it's, um, you know, it's going, you know, so, yeah, hopefully you would think Microsoft by now would have a little bit better controls for redundancy on uh, yeah, I mean, they do have global freaking, um, you know, data centers, right? So, you know, you're in 2023, I don't think it's really an acceptable issue for unless, unless there was some sort of back end network routing or something. I just don't see it, right? I, why can't your outlook.com go to a different IP address? Again, and you know, this is geolocated. It was um, in South America, in some uh, South American users. Yeah, so um, it could have been some sort of geo routing issue. So, but there's nothing in here saying what exactly caused the actual outage, right? So maybe that'd be in tomorrow's story, but who knows?
UCLA, Siemens Energy, and Schneider Electric join growing list of Move It breach victims. Yay! Several more organizations have confirmed falling victim to a hacking campaign targeting Progress Software's popular Move It file transfer tool. UCLA said its IT security team discovered on June 1st that it was targeted and then mobilized its incident response procedures to patch the vulnerability. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Siemens Energy confirmed that the company was among those targeted, but said so far they found that no critical data has been compromised. Additionally, Schneider Electric, one of the world's largest digital automation companies, confirmed that it's a Move It user and that they're investigating what data may have been accessed. Finally, low-cost airline Allegiant Air and New York City's public school system announced in recent days that they were impacted by the Move It fiasco and are in process of notifying breach victims. Progress Software is facing a federal class action lawsuit over its handling of the breaches. Oh. Yeah, this move it is just the gift that's just going to be just it's just going to keep giving. That's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I didn't even know about this software until this breach. Yeah, you know, when I see it coming out, I'm like, ah, whatever. It's going to affect a couple people. But the stories just keep coming out. I'm like, wow, this was actually, you know, used by a lot more people than I originally thought. So it's. Hmm. And here's a question as well. I, I actually need to go on to the Clop Tour Network um and see if they've actually started posting anything because uh, when they were originally were making those communications they pretty much said hey if you've been impacted by us then you know reach out to us and then we'll talk to you so i do wonder um you know just how widespread this really is um, who's being potentially disclosed, things of that nature. So, you know, the, the simple fact, what did that happen like two, three weeks ago? And now we're at 100 organizations or more than 100 organizations around the world affected by this hacking campaign. You know, I mean, Klopp definitely put a massive you know, bullseye on their back. So you never know. They could definitely be part of, or um, definitely be part of some sort of Oh, there you are. That's right. Sorry, I had a brain fart. So yeah, the U.S. government actually put the what is it, one million or ten million dollars on the on the line to be able to capture anybody who may have been part of the Klopp ransomware group. So yeah, very cool, very cool. Anyway, yeah. At this point, it's just. I guess if you're in an organization, I think the best thing for you to do really is talk to all your vendors. If they have not been on this list, this thing's a link. Let's see if it actually, does it actually list out? Not now, go away. Um, trying to see. No, it doesn't look like it's got an actual list they kind of linked it uh, in the story here including seven u.s companies have been so yeah i mean this guy just made a mention of it i thought that that sorry ladies and gentlemen i thought that was actually a, like a some sort of detailed list that would actually show you know the over 100 victims but anyway um yeah i guess do you do diligences right um I mean, we have the TTPs in house. Uh, been talking to a couple of potential uh, folks that have been impacted by it. So, um, it's just, like I said, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And with that, let's go in and hear the mid roll. And now, a word from our sponsor, App Omni. Over provisioned users can expose your organization's most sensitive data. Just a single attack on one of those users may compromise your entire SaaS estate. With App Omni's identity and threat detection capabilities, you can detect and respond to suspicious activities within your SaaS environment. Gain visibility into over provisioned users, the SaaS data they have access to, and receive guided remediation. Get started at appomni.com. That's A P P O M N I. 
Sports.com. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the show where we do definitely talk about the fun part of the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. If you are new here, this is a LinkedIn initiative that we have going a part of the group. Um, before I get started, hopefully George Strasberger is in the chat. George, please say hi if you are, and please get ready to tag somebody in there. I do see in the mod chat that uh, we do have somebody on standby if George is not in here. Um, if you have not seen um, George's post from yesterday, I will drop this into the chat for everybody to take a look at. Um, you know, he does. Yeah, you know, he did make a, a mention here of using chat GPT to help him write this post today uh, to help cut down because apparently it was a little bit too long for even LinkedIn's type of uh, notification. So it's uh, it's definitely interesting. Um, but he does talk about some of the struggles he is going through with ADHD. You know, I'm, I'm right there with you. So definitely, you know, read his story and you know connect with other people who are on the simply cyber community challenge hashtag um and kind of go from there um you know connect with other people that are you know, we are a group of folks with the same mindset same mentalities you know i bet you put 100 of us in a room of the wonderful 177 people currently watching you know you'll probably make 10 good friends at least, right? Maybe even lifelong friends. You just never know. Um, it, it's crazy how that thing works. So bringing everybody together, again, of like mind and same goals and things of that nature, you know, you can make some lasting fr fr friendship. So anyway, also later today, later today, starting in four hours, is another uh, part, uh, part three of eight of decrypting marketing jargon for cyber enterprises, which is the the series that Ger Dr. Gerald Ogier started for LinkedIn. Again, I gave that a hint yesterday. Some people have said it. I call this individual Smiley, who will be guest hosting. Very, very eager to see this at 1 p.m. Um, for the the guest host that will be filling in for Dr. Gerald Osier for this one today. So please, if you have not bookmarked this, put this on your calendar. Uh, definitely click that link in the chat and set up to watch it. With that, we will go on into the post roll, ladies and gentlemen. Mocking J slips by EDR with the process injection technique. Researchers at Israeli-based Security Joes have discovered a process injection method called MockingJ that does not rely on EDR-monitored APIs. Process injection manipulates the memory of a process to either add new functionality or modify its behavior. MockingJ leverages dynamic link libraries with default read-write-execute permissions to push code into the address space of running processes. The approach requires less effort to execute and reduces the likelihood of detection by endpoint security mechanisms, making it an attractive option for attackers. All right, so this one is an interesting one. This really will get a little technical. So what essentially they're doing, uh, we, I ran this thing through uh, a sandboxing yesterday, but essentially they are doing what's called DLL sideloading. So, okay. Let's get real technical here for a second. The way that Windows works, when you launch an application and there's a DLL that's required for application, let's just say calculator.exe or uh, calc.exe. Um, if there is a DLL that's required for that application to run, there is a directory of trees that Windows will naturally go through to look for that DLL before it actually um, or it goes to that list of directories to find the DLL that's required before it says, Hey, I can't find those D that DLL. I mean, everybody here, I'm sure has seen that particular situation where, Hey, we can't find DLL to load this application. We got an error. Um, and I don't want to, it's kind of DFIR ish. 
so I don't want to really say what that directory is, but if you circumvent, so let's just say you have, you know, DLL is the third directory or fourth directory down in that line, right? But if you, what's called side loading DLL is you putting that DLL quicker in the directory chain of DLLs that Microsoft will look through, then you're side loading a DLL. You're inje doing de injection of a DLL file into an application before it's able to load the real DLL, right? So let's just say, to break this thing down in layman's terms, you're going on Amtrak. You know, we, me and Dr. Darrell Osher and some other of you fine folks in chat, we're all in the South Car Charleston, South Carolina area or in South Carolina. Um, we have a local Amtrak up here in Charleston. So let's say I jump on the Amtrak here in Charleston. I'm going to an unknown destination. Um, so we're launching our application called a train and it's trying to get to his destination. But that DLL file is located at the destination. We're putting a DLL file at stop two or three, thus side loading a DLL. So that's kind of a, a little bit of an oversimplification of, uh, of that, but that's essentially what they're doing. So they're doing DLL injection, thus to inject processes into the workstation that will disable and do other things to potential EDRs and you know, all that stuff. So hopefully, hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down. Submarine cables at growing risk of cyber attacks. Researchers from Recorded Future say that recent geopolitical developments, including the Russia-Ukraine conflict, China's course of actions toward Taiwan, and growing tensions between the U.S. and China, increase the risk that submarine cables will be the targets for sabotage and even espionage attacks. An estimated 99% of intercontinental internet traffic and data and voice communication is transmitted through fiber optic submarine cables laid along the ocean floor. The report cited two submarine cables connecting Taiwan to the island of Matsu were cut by Chinese civilian ships, likely intentionally within six days of each other back in February. Earlier this month, Dmitry Medvedev, a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, declared that Russia should have free hand to destroy its enemies under sea communication cables. In in addition to physical attacks, the report highlights the risk of cyber attacks on undersea cables, though there is only one known example of such a cyber attack back in April of 2022, when the U.S. government revealed it fended off an attack on a cable linking Hawaii to the Pacific region. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I'll have to go back and read this story because Dr. Jared Ozier completely trail, uh, train make me, make, uh, train wrecked me with his comment saying that he can smell what I am stepping in. So, um, and those who don't know, the okay. So there are there are literally fiber optic cables that span the globe, right and there's always been a lot of, you know, communications around or yeah, communications and talks and things about that, about, um, you know, foreign adversaries, you know, Russia, China, whoever, you know, essentially dropping submarines down and tapping into these cables and thus potentially, you know, uh, spying on potential communications uh, that is traveling across the wire or in this case, fiber. Um, a free hand to destroy all enemies under sea. Yeah, so you know, of course we're you know closely monitoring more Russia garbage. Um, so it's gonna that whole thing is. Mm, I'll stop there before I get too political, because I can go off a freaking tinfoil hat deep end. Um, yeah, it is a, it is a an issue, especially for you know national security efforts, right? So, you know, when you got quote operations abroad and you're 